Hi, my name is Damian Flynn and welcome to this 8-minute series on System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2012. In this webcast, we're going to take a look at installing our first SCVMM servers in high availability mode, utilizing Microsoft's failover clustering services. I've already pre-staged and configured a two-node Windows failover cluster, which we will utilize for the installation of our SCVMM deployment. If you need more information on how to install SCVMM or any other two node clusters, please check my blog www.damianflynn.com. From the setup media, we can then launch the installation wizard and agree with the initial license, where we will be presented with three options to install the server, console, and self service portals. The server will detect that we are on a cluster and ask if we'd like to install in HA mode, which we'll agree to. And then once we've provided the registration and our installation location, SCVMM's installer will check the prerequisites are all installed. We can then proceed and provide information on where our SQL server is and the database name that we'd like to create. And finally, because we're in a HA environment, we also can provide the name of the node and its IP address in the cluster. SCVMM requires a service account and also a container for the distributed key to be configured in Active Directory. Please check my blog for information on how to create and prepare this container for the beta builds. We then are asked to validate the ports for TCP, which SCVM will utilize for communication with other hosts and with hardware deployment. And finally, we can move forward and install our self-service portal on our default website. Library configurations in a HA need to be done within the wizard so we can move on and begin the installation process. The installer itself will take a number of minutes, which I have uh, speeded up for in this recording. Um, however, in real life, you can probably take a little break and uh, make yourself a coffee as you wait for the process to complete. After the installation is done, SCVMM itself will launch and we can also check in our failover clustering to make sure that SCVMM has indeed correctly created a new service and as you can see on our screens has also registered the single preferred owner as the current node for this particular cluster. Also within SCVMM, we can see on the fabric view that our cluster has configured just a single node to start with. Now we can proceed to our second node in the cluster. I'm going to use terminal servers to connect to this node, so you'll see its banner in the top of your display. Once we've logged on to the server, everything will be as before. Um, all of the prerequisites have already been pre-staged in the environment. And once more, I'm just simply going to launch the setup. The installation experience is very similar to our first node. However, many of the questions this time around are already pre-answered for us. Selecting the server option this time determines that we already have a VMM environment when we were asked if we'd like to join as a HA member, which of course we're going to select this time around. Again, Prerequisites will be validated to make sure everything is in place and our database selections that we previously provided will now be presented to us for verification. We then will enter the password for our service account and move forward to the wizard where we can confirm previously provided information. Once we are satisfied that the details are correct, we can click on the install button and once more wait for the installation to complete. As on our first note, this is a time-consuming process and I've speeded this up for the screencast. Once the installation is complete, we can click close and once more SCVMM will launch its console for us to validate that it's completed the installation correctly. This time when we check the fabric view, we shall see two nodes now configured as active and responding in our environment. And a quick check on our failover clustering manager should also permit us to see that our service is now available on two different preferred owners, MON17 1 and 2. This then allows us to use failover clustering to actually fail the service over as far as our second cluster. In the background we can see SCVMM has actually shut down and is going into reconnect mode. And after 60 seconds or so, will automatically reconnect for us to SCVMM and show that a high availability services have indeed worked. 
Okay, so that wasn't difficult, and uh, within the last uh, five minutes, we've successfully installed two nodes of a high availability failover cluster. Right, next thing we're going to take a quick look at is uh, initial configurations. Let's get some of the groups and the profiles, and even that uh, missing uh, file library added to the environment because uh, that was something that we were denied the ability to install during our HA installation. That's not the case of course when we're installing a non-HA you can define the library as the actual same server. Within the settings view I'm going to start and uh, take a look at the options for networking and uh, initially I'm going to deselect the two options for automatic creation of logical and virtual networks. I want to manage this um, since it's brand new manually so I understand what's happening. I also want to define an email address for my self-service users so uh, pick an address that's uh, useful for your environment. Check the remote control is using default ports. How often are you going to refresh your library which is one hour. Uh, validate our SQL connection is correct and of course let Microsoft know that we're uh, participating in the experience improvement programs. Switching back to the fabric view um, we have the ability to actually organize everything that we're using from a physical resource. I'm going to set up my environment using uh, two uh, different groups one for lab and one for production and once we've completed that I'm also going to go ahead and install our library server itself. The library server simply needs a username and passwords um, so that we have access to it, provide the name of the server, and then from there, uh, SCVM will detect the server, the shares available to it, and we can quite simply click through the wizard and install these for our usage. The jobs window will pop up to let us know how progress is going, and uh, within a few moments, that library server will be registered and all the resources sitting on the server available for us to utilize within SCVMM. Now, Heading back as far as the settings, we're going to set up some run as accounts and profiles. Um, this can be a little bit more complicated, um, but we're going to start with a run as account for adding our host machines to the environment. Expect this to change after beta, uh, because feedback on this one has been pretty active. But I'm going to start again with a service account that's got permission to our Hyper-V hosts, and we're going to add this to a profile. Now, the first time around, we don't actually have any profiles, so we're going to create a new profile. Give it a name again to say that it's scoped and kind of going around in a circle here he's asking us to put an account into the profile we're not going to we're just going to click through the wizard and then select that particular profile which will attach the profile to the account we're creating that then will show back up in our run as view and if i go back to the profiles view i'll see that that account is actually connected to the profile and right now we've got no consumers actually utilizing it now we're going to go away and make some delegated administrators. Um, the first one I'm going to set up is my infrastructure admins. These are the guys that have full access to all of our virtual machine hosts within the environment. So I'm going to scope them to all of the environment. And again, of course, giving them one restricted access to our file server library. We're going to use the run as account and profile that we just defined that has the permissions to actually add the uh, Hyper-V hosts into our environment. So you may have different run as accounts set up um, for your different type of hosts, um, Hyper-V, uh, Citrix, Zen, and of course VMware. Now running to the wizard a second time, we've set up a second delegated administrator, this time just focusing on our lab hosts. That's it for this part of the um, screencasts. We've uh, walked through the installation of a high availability environment and setting up the initial configurations. On the next screencast, we're going to look at the next stages of actually utilizing and getting your hosts into the environment. Thank you for watching.